Oh, I'm Tony Valdez. A bridge, a building, a sign on a building, the things you see every day in Los Angeles, and often things with a fascinating story behind them. Tonight, we'll tell you some of those stories, and we'll start with one of the city's most famous stars that's about to undergo a major makeover. The Hollywood sign is far and away the best known Los Angeles icon. It is to us what the Eiffel Tower is to Paris and the Empire State Building is to New York City. So what do you suppose the second most familiar image of Los Angeles is? Could it be the theme building at LAX? How about City Hall? Or maybe an In-N-Out Burger, animal style, of course. Here's a hint, courtesy of Madonna. Here's another hint from the film To Live and Die in L.A. And just in case, see if you spot it in this Chrysler commercial. Truth is, good things come to those who work. This bridge and those arches are such a big part of the city's economy and image. Frank Gallo rents out space at the 6th Street Bridge film location and base camp to the dozens of production companies that are shooting here several times every week. Most of the time we're contacted by location managers regarding uh, this particular bridge, primarily because it's uh, the iconicness to Los Angeles and the fact that it's just one of the nicer looking bridges in the uh, series of bridges going down the uh, few streets here. Perhaps it's better if I live in your heart where the world can't see me. Like Greta Garbo's character Marguerite and Camille, which was filmed at the MGM Studios in Culver City, the 6th Street Bridge is doomed by a disease. It's called ASR, Alkali Silica Reaction. During construction, seen here in a photo from BridgeHunter.com, sand from the Los Angeles River was used to make the thousands of cubic yards of concrete that were necessary for the 6th Street Bridge. This wasn't done at any of the other bridges. Years later, engineers discovered that the sand, along with the cement, gravel, and water, created a chemical mix that was silently destroying the bridge, causing the concrete to eat itself up from the inside out. ASR is often compared to a cancer for which there is no known cure. By most accounts, the 6th Street Bridge is at stage 4, and there is no stage 5. We meet, and the angels sing. The 6th Street Bridge was opened in 1932, spanning two railroad yards in the Los Angeles River to connect downtown with Boyle Heights. It is a tremendous icon for the city of Los Angeles in terms of the bridges. This is the one that stands out. It's the longest, um, it's two-thirds of a mile. Some said it was the longest uh, concrete span bridge in the world when it was built. It's also, so it's the longest, the largest. It's also the last built of the really monumental uh, bridges built in Los Angeles spanning the Los Angeles River. In architectural terms, it's really a viaduct, which is a bridge with several spans that are close together. But we'll just stick with calling it a bridge. It was one of nine crossing the river that were designed and built by Merrill Butler, the city's legendary chief engineer for bridges. His education by today's standards was very unconventional. His father had passed away and he was left to care for his mother. Mm -hmm. And so because of her illness, he, you know, basically was there at the house full time. So mm -hmm. the only way that he could go to college was to take a correspondence course. Mm -hmm. And he, with the University of Wisconsin, he took a correspondence course and got his degree in civil engineering. On midday Sunday in 2008, Butler's grandson talked about his other landmark, the four tunnels originally built as part of Figueroa Street that are now the northbound lanes of the 110 freeway through Elysian Park heading toward Pasadena. <laughs> and I can remember driving through those and my dad would say, well, you're going through your grandfather's tunnels. <laughs> we are. <laughs> you know, was, yeah, those and then are you're on your grandfather's bridge. He's a When engineers predicted a 70% chance that the 6th Street Bridge would crumble sometime over the next 50 years, the Los Angeles City Council went into action. That was five years ago. My first reaction was, we're going to preserve the bridge, and we're going to do everything we can to retrofit it and preserve it. We don't want to lose those beautiful arches that everyone recognizes worldwide. Jose Wiesad is the City Council member for the 14th District, which includes the 6th Street Bridge. He became convinced that repairs would be too expensive, and they would only extend the bridge's life by another 30 years. The second choice for me was, well, let's replicate the bridge. Let's build something new and replicate it. Again, cost helped we saw and a majority of the city council decide against replacing the 6th Street Bridge with anything that would even remotely look a little bit like the original. Instead, this is the bridge, or something like it, that the Los Angeles Bureau of Engineering wants to build. There are no arches, there's no curve in the roadway, but it is the least expensive solution. 
For the record, the Bureau of Engineering declined to be interviewed for this report. When the 6th Street Bridge is finally demolished, it might not make much of a difference to Juan Rosales. He makes a daily round trip across it for exercise. I love it. I love it. I not only go up to the bridge, I go all the way to the park, run around the park, go up the stairs, come down and then come back to work. For others, the 6th Street Bridge is irreplaceable. It's my favorite way to enter downtown. And when you come through, it opens up, and all you can see is downtown and just that long expanse of bridge. I love it. Remember, there's that prediction that the bridge could fall down on its own within the next 50 years, which could be as soon as tonight. It's a short enough span that I'm not sure it would give me second thoughts, but uh, now, that, now that you've put it this way, <laughs> I, I might choose another route. Councilmember Wissad acknowledges that very few of the plans to replace the 6th Street Bridge are written in concrete yet, if you'll pardon that expression. But I was wondering about the future of those one-of-a-kind arches. <laughs> we hadn't thought about that. But I could look back on this interview when I'm uh, a grandfather and say, you know what, I'm glad Tony gave me that idea to do something with the arches, and there they are now, sitting somewhere, standing somewhere, or melted to do to, to something else. Perhaps, you know, we're melting uh, metal these days to make statues and other things. Maybe we make a replicate of the whole bridge out of that, the melted metal. your degree in 2003? Yes. Still paying off your loans? I am. In that case, it's time for another random act of helpfulness. Oh my god. Would it be okay if Honda paid off the rest of your student loan? I can't believe it. Yes. Today we help pay off a debt. And during our spring event, we can help you put an award-winning Honda in your garage. Right now, you can lease the 2015 CRV LX for just $239 a month plus tax. And it's been named Motor Trend's 2015 Sport Utility of the Year. I had a baby this year. I just want to be paying for his future and not for my past. This is a tale of two flavors, born on opposite ends of the earth and brought together by a burning passion for barbecue. Introducing Chinese Spare Ribs, a flavor fusion that's boldly Chinese and classically American. Get them hot off the rack before they're gone, only at Panda Express, where good fortune smiles. Our boss is away sale at Paul's TV and Appliances. Paul, the king of big screens, is off upgrading his crown. While he's away, we mark down TVs at least 50% off. Like this 55-inch curved 3D Samsung Smart LED with built-in Wi-Fi, 50% off. Or a 55-inch curved OLED LG Smart TV, now 57% off. Or a 65-inch Samsung Smart LED, 54% off. Hurry, Paul comes back Tuesday and these deals won't last. Get the best service, selection, and prices from the king. Paul's TV and Appliances. What can outer space teach us? It's about shared exploration. As a girl, sci-fi showed me that a better future happens when you reach for it together. That led me to the space program, where I open its discoveries to everyone. Today, I'm also making education more available at a school working to help entire communities learn and transform. My name is Jean Holm, Chief Knowledge Architect at NASA, and I am proud to teach at UCLA Extension. Imagine for a moment that you're in the audience at the Westlake Theater, the one with the big neon sign on the roof across from what's now MacArthur Park near downtown Los Angeles. The year is 1932, long before television and infomercials. But at movie theaters everywhere, audiences watch short films that look like newsreels, even though they're really advertising. The board is without question the most outstanding value today. They're shown right before the feature film. The idea for this one is to show how fast the terraplane automobile is as it keeps up with an airplane carrying famous stuntman J.D. Pate. By the way, Muroc Dry Lake is now called Rogers Lake, and it's part of the Edwards Air Force Base north of Los Angeles near Lancaster. While the plane's drifting in, 
pilot jockeys for position. Closer, closer, they're coming in at 70 miles an hour. And boy, look how close to the sand the wheels of that plane go. All right, here he comes, going, what? Uh-oh, not quite. Just a sudden gust of wind, that's all, that lifted the plane high into the air. Fate's arms are so exhausted that to keep from falling, he grips the wing of the plane with his teeth. But they say the third time is the charm. Let's see if it is. Yes, sir, it is. And good boy, Pate, you made it. Here's a close-up of that same shot. Boy, that was a close one. Just a close shave and also a haircut if you want it. Earl C. Anthony owned the Los Angeles Terraplane dealership until production ended in 1938, so he was hoping this promotional film would sell a lot of cars. He also sold Packard motor cars at a luxurious downtown showroom. Anthony was as passionate about radio as he was about automobiles, so if you look closely at the top of his building, you'll see both KFI, the radio station he started, and Packard on the antenna tower. Outside the showroom, there was a neon sign with the Packard logo made for Earl C. Anthony in Paris, where neon signs were invented. This one was the beginning of a new era for the city and for the nation. As signage, neon began in Los Angeles. Yeah. The first neon sign in America was at Hope and Olympic, it was the Packard dealership sign brought to America by Earl C. Anthony in 1923. That year, a neon sign could literally stop traffic in Los Angeles. People were slamming on their brakes and probably causing accidents. A new reproduction of America's first neon sign is outside the old Earl C. Anthony building, now called the Packard Lofts downtown. Fire! This is the neon shop at the Williams Sign Company in Pomona. A life-size photo of Maurice Williams wearing a neon bow tie oversees all the work that's done here. The old tie itself rests in a corner on one of the workbenches. Williams started his family sign company in 1930 when the emphasis was on neon. All the signs at Fairplex in Pomona, for example, were made by Williams. This used to be a little courtyard. Today, Maurice's great-grandson runs the business, making modern signs for companies including In-N-Out Burger that have evolved beyond neon. You're learning new things every day, you know, as technologies change and um, with uh, designs of logos and things that come your way, you have to figure out how to turn it into a sign and turn it into something beautiful that your customer would purchase and, and love. This is Brian Curry at work in the Williams Neon Shop. He's demonstrating how to make a simple looking but very difficult to bend sign, forming the letters M-O-N-A for Museum of Neon Art from one piece of glass. Brian blows air into the glass tube to keep it from collapsing as he moves back and forth between the fire and the pattern he's following. And I'm always trying to be precise on everything I do because you, you don't get a second chance. You have to have it done correctly the first time. So it's a careful of measurements and balances and temperatures and everything like that. And Brian should know. By his estimate, he's bent the tubes for close to half the neon signs in Las Vegas. Creating color involves another skill set and the use of different gases. Even though we call these neon signs, there's often some other gas instead of neon inside the tube. David Svensson learned to make signs so he could create artistry like this. There's three things that go on here. It's uh, colored glass, the color of the gas, and phosphor coatings. And in the neon industry, there are more argon mercury tubes than there are neon. Your turquoise, blue, greens, yellows, whites are all argon mercury. Uh, neon is red. When electricity is applied to the gas-filled tube, we finally see what the world calls a neon sign. You came to me from out of nowhere. The lights of Los Angeles aren't what they once were. This is Broadway in the heart of the city as it looks now. And this is the view from the same intersection in 1931. Wonderful dreams. There's so much neon incandescent bulb and lighting on the street that it looked like daylight. It was phenomenal. People in LA just don't don't realize that how it looked in, in its heyday. The neon in front of the Palace Theater, which is now 101 years old, still glows brightly every night directly across the street from the opulent and classically beautiful Los Angeles Theater. 
down the street. The clock tower at the Eastern Columbia building rises out of the darkness like a monument to mysticism. While the Orpheum's neon marquee across the street is perfect, and the two adjacent blade signs wink at passersby exactly as they have for most of the past 86 years. The rooftop sign is still spectacular as it's being converted from incandescent light bulbs to compact fluorescent or LED bulbs. These are just a few of the buildings featured on the Museum of Neon Arts Neon Cruises. Here's another downtown neon landmark. The Bendix sign right behind me is one of the tallest in the city of Los Angeles. That capital B is 35 feet tall, believe it or not. Uh, originally, when that was constructed in the late 1920s, it was a beacon for planes landing at what would become LAX. Believe it or not, they even had a giant neon arrow on the rooftop visible only to planes flying, and that arrow pointed towards LAX. Another downtown landmark is New Chinatown, where many of the buildings light up as soon as the sky goes dark. And of course, there's Felix Chevrolet near Exposition Park in USC. Elsewhere, there's the colorful neon palette at Carter Sexton Artist Materials and the neon clown at Circus Liquor, both in North Hollywood. In the Fairfax district, Cantor's is smothered in neon like a fresh, warm bagel should be loaded with cream cheese. While we're at it, there's Tommy's, the original in the Rampart district. And in Hollywood, the neon sign that once helped shoppers find the world-famous Broadway department store has survived all the attempts to demolish it. Not far from here is the Holy Superette Light Church, a fine example of ecclesiastical neon. We have more neon crosses and neon church signs than anyone else. The Holy Superette Light Faith believes in Jesus Christ and the human aura, which explains exactly why they respond so well to the glow of a neon sign. Speaking of a glow, the newest neon in Los Angeles is on the new headquarters for Lucky Brand Jeans of America. It's on the west bank of the Los Angeles River between the 4th and 6th Street viaducts in the Arts District. It's a little less than two and a half miles from Olympic and Hope, where America's first neon sign went up at Earl C. Anthony's Packard dealership almost 90 years ago. We'd like to think that Lucky Brand's motto for its jeans applies equally well to neon. They are both too tough to die. So we get these serial killers. Nobody sleeps. We have work to do. You're clearly something of an overachiever. There's gotta be something that can give us a lead into where they're going. It's gonna be a very messy day. The following all new after Gotham Monday on Fox. The Iran nuke negotiations. We've got the latest from the talks, political fallout, and next steps. Senator Bob Corker shares valuable insight. Sunday at 8 on Fox 11. Check out my breakfast. I got eggs, sausage, ham, bacon, cheese, and toasted sourdough bread. Uh, mine's easier. Mmm. Do you know that guy? Get a load of Jack's Loaded Breakfast Sandwich. What's on it? What's not on it? Two freshly cracked eggs, ham, sausage, bacon, and cheese, all on toasty sourdough made just for you. It's like a big old breakfast buffet right in your hand. Shopping for a mattress used to be... Confusing. Intimidating. Kind of weird. But not anymore, because only Sit & Sleep has bed match technology that matches you with just the right mattress for your body and the position you like to sleep in, which makes shopping for your mattress at Sit & Sleep... Easy. A piece of cake. No-brainer. This week, we've negotiated special prices on Sealy, queen size, just $9.99. Sit & Sleep will beat anyone's advertised price or your mattress is free! Your brain holds nearly 100 billion neurons. This supercomputer inside your head makes 20 million billion calculations per second. That's a whole lot of thinking. Something else to think about? At National University, you can start your degree program anytime you want. With open enrollment throughout the year, we're ready when you're ready. Don't think you have time to learn something new? You just did. Keep learning at nu.edu. Company ever to win both the Indy 500 and a Supercross Racing Championship. They were also the first to come up with this. The Honda Dream Garage Sales Event! Where you can get great deals on almost everything Honda makes, including the sporty Civic, named best value in its class. Get great deals on Civics right now! The Honda Dream Garage Sales Event. Get a dream deal on a Civic with standard rear view camera. Now, at your Honda dealer. 
When you paint with Frog Tape textured surface, something magical happens. Because Frog Tape is the only painting tape with patented paint block technology to give you the cleanest, sharpest lines possible. Traditional tapes don't form a good seal on rough and uneven surfaces. With Frog Tape, you get professional results every time. Tackle textures like a pro. Simply apply the tape, seal with the liquid paint block edge sealer, and paint. For professional results, there's only one name to know. Frog Tape. Keeps paint out, keeps lines sharp. You're looking at the Harbor and Santa Monica Freeway Interchange, the 10 and the 110. Staples Center and LA Live are just above the top of your screen. What we want to show you from up here in Sky Fox is the building over here, the Odd Fellows Hall on Washington Boulevard at Oak Street. Most people drive by here on the freeways without ever realizing the two hugely important pieces of broadcast history are connected to this building. This is Hunter Hancock, old HH, and you're listening to Hunting with Hunter, the best in rhythm and blues records, heard every night, Monday through Saturday, from 6 to 9 p.m. on the original 24-hour station, KGFJ, Los Angeles. In the 1950s, Hunter Hancock was the first DJ to introduce R&B and rock and roll to Los Angeles. But this story's not about him, it's about, one more time... The original 24-hour station, KGFJ, Los Angeles. Night and day. This is Oddfellows Hall as it looked shortly after it opened in 1923. About three years after that, a couple of ambitious young men decided to turn their hobby into something that might make them some money. They were high school buddies. They were both into ham radio. And then uh, it was uh, Cal, Cal Smith, actually Ben McGlyshen, uh, who was the owner of KGFJ, but then Cal Smith was his ham radio buddy and more the technical side of it. So it's Cal who gets the credit for putting the station's antenna on the roof of the Odd Fellows building, where it remains today after 86 years of exposure to all kinds of weather, not to mention several earthquakes. A tall pole at each end of the antenna holds up a crossbar, and four wires hang between them, making it look sort of like a hammock. In the earliest days of radio, antennas like this were very common all across the country. Today, however, the FCC believes that KGFJ's hammock antenna is the last one left in America. KGFJ in a double play. Los Angeles. So KGFJ, when I came to California, when I was 11 years old, that's the first station I heard. My sister, who had brought me to California, uh, had an apartment on 11th Street, and KGFJ is at Washington, which is approximately 20th Street, and uh, so the, it came in really loud, or sitting right under the transmitter. Art LeBeau is the dean of American DJs, the man who invented oldies but goodies. He vividly remembers KGFJ's station identification. This is KGFJ, the original 24-hour station, owned and operated by Ben S. McGlashan. Uh, in the 50s, they dropped the Ben S. McGlashan. Day and night. Nevertheless, Ben was the one who came up with the idea of keeping KGFJ on the air all night at 12.30 on the radio dial. Like the slogan said, it was the original 24-hour station, the first one in the United States to do that. The year was 1927. Well, I think it was a big deal then because uh, there were there was no FMs, you know, and there was only a handful of AMs, I believe six or seven, and very few played music. A lot of the radio stations would come on for a half hour at a time during different parts of the day or maybe an hour, sometimes just in the evenings alone. They felt there was a need for radio full time. Plus, they also thought they could make a few bucks off of it, selling advertising in the middle of the night. We pause our story here for a moment to show you this photograph of canaries, presumably singing ones, along with a neon sign in the KGFJ studio. Obviously, programming in the 1930s was flexible, but what about that call sign? KGFJ stood for keeping good folks jumping. On Monday, March 10th, 1952, TV Radio Life had an ad for Art LeBeau on KGFJ, the station he had listened to as a child. I had a show in the afternoon called Teen Timers Matinee, playing, you know, stuff for the kids. I mean, playing Johnny Ray, Cry, and things like that. You feel better if you cry. 
About three years later, the music American kids wanted to hear sounded like this. Nowadays, 12.30 a.m. is KYPA, broadcasting in Korean from a modern radio antenna near Dodger Stadium. The KGFJ call sign is assigned to an FM station in Belt, Montana, near the Canadian border. Art LeBeau's at KHHT, Hot 92.3 FM, but he can still hear those voices from long ago. I used to sit in front of the radio about this far from the speaker and just stare into it and hear all these people when describing ivory soap, you know, it's tell you, it floats, it's pure. It's not just, it's ivory soap and it's pure. It's, a, it's ivory soap, it's pure. Pure ivory, pure, gentle, mild ivory. You know, it's just like, oh, it's so wonderful. Seven million miles from Earth. How does it look? Here we go. Roger. We're now he's go. exited the module. And we are one step from Mars. Never miss a moment with UVerse Live TV on the go. Make the cash call and ask for the do-over refi. If you refinanced your mortgage in the last 18 months, we can redo it at a lower rate, like today's 2.875% rate and APR with no closing costs. Just call 877-890-CASH. At Supercuts, we pay attention to every detail, so you'll feel sharp, clean, and ready to go. And the moment you're not feeling ready, pop right back in and we'll get you ready to go again. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit hungry and there's nothing really good around. Turn around. Every now and then I get a little bit tired of living off the taste of the air. Turn Now try Fiber One Protein Bars with a great new taste of cookies and cream. You can cut down the cost of filling up, slash the cost of ownership, and now you can ax the tax on any member of the Prius family. Yes, for the first time ever, get 2,000 cash back you can use toward paying the sales tax on any new Prius, or use it for a down payment, or just put it in your pocket. It's your choice. So drive home your new Prius today. We make it easy. Toyota, let's go places. We hope you've enjoyed your look at the stories behind some of LA's iconic symbols, and perhaps these stories will make you look at Los Angeles a little differently. By the way, find Art LeBeau's current station at artlebeau.com. Thank you for being with us tonight. Good night.